I want to talk about film music because it's amazing music and a lot of people still encounter it even if they don't go to concerts or operas or chamber music stuff. And it wasn't really quite until later in my career that I started to fixate on horror. So it, it was an interest in Bernard Herrmann that first pulled me into a lot of the film music stuff. His best known music might be the music for Psycho. There's several characteristics of music in horror film if you look at the entire genre. Um, maybe the first thing that comes to mind is the, the stinger chord or the shocking note or group of notes that, that indicates a sudden revelation or sudden shock. Uh, but that shock and that emotional reaction, um, it's made extremely vivid through that stinger chord. Horror film will typically allow for more dissonance than, than other genres. The distinction between music part of the soundtrack and the sound, sound part of the soundtrack sometimes is not a useful distinction. They're sometimes blurred together and what would be otherwise thought of as noise or non-musical elements actually become important parts of the soundscape in these films. It's been referred to as Mamoulian's sound stew. Um, I think Mamoulian, the director, actually talked about it as a stew. And, and I've, in my research, I found different, slightly different accounts of just what ingredients are in the stew, but certain things that we know and that come up in all the descriptions are his own heartbeat. They had Mamoulian run up and down a set of stairs and get his heart really beating loudly and quickly, and they recorded that. And so there's this pulsing heartbeat throughout the whole thing. And it's, you know, what a vivid sonic symbol for life, being alive. I mean, that's a really important sound that comes up a lot in horror films. A lot of other horror films use that heartbeat. Bartok's music for strings, percussion, and celesta. And um, this really important piece of modernist orchestral music. I didn't encounter that piece until college, probably a music history survey or something. Um, and that was the point at which I realized, oh, the shiny music. I mean, I thought like, what are they ripping off the shiny? I, I didn't understand. I'd seen the shining before and I, I thought that was music written for the film. The middle movement of that, the adagio, is what Kubrick uses throughout the shining. And one really interesting thing about that Bartok piece is it's all, it's built in several levels symmetrically, palindromically. What Kubrick was, was really brilliantly doing was bringing in a piece of music that was put together and built on ideas of symmetry and, and mirrors and palindromes. And that's part of the shining as a film as well, and the, visually and thematically. It's really such a smart use of a pre-existing piece of music on the part of Kubrick. And they, they shot it and timed it in, in a way that as the sort of climax builds up in the music, it's as he reaches up for the door, and I mean it, it's put together as though it was made for that scene, and instead the, the music was already in existence and Kubrick shot it so that the scene matched the music, but it works, it works beautifully. Horror film has the ability to, to get to some topics that are some of the most awful topics that we ever have to consider in terms of just our own mortality or fragility of our lives, and things that are extremely upsetting to us. And horror film gives us a chance to, to process some of that, to think about it. Maybe it's approaching it through a kind of cloaking or through the level of there's a monster and the monster is some sort of embodiment of some fear or something we have. And those films are, are pretty incredible the way they can work out some of these bigger cultural anxieties.